is happening so today i have want to speak about something that is happening in the background uh, that most people don't even realize that is happening so this is uh, the duplication of data on your splunk index uh, so you have terabytes or petabytes of data or even just small gigabytes of data coming into splunk every day but then you don't actually know whether there is data duplication happening on splunk right um, so duplication is let's say you have like 10 lines of code and then the same lines get ingested again right uh, so let's say i so this is a splunk instance that i have right so i have some cisco data here right uh, and then i'm going to run it for the past 24 hours so this is just a test instance i only have like 84 events right uh, so you can see you have data here but you can't really tell if there is any duplication happening and let's say you have like hundreds of um server sending you terabytes of data there is simply no way that you can actually tell whether there is data duplication happening so the problem with data duplication is uh, there's two things right one even if your data is getting uh, ingested again it is getting metered basically that means it will count against your license right uh, so let's say you have a terabyte of license and you have like at least 15 GB of license getting uh, short every day like uh, one terabyte and 15 GB is what you ingest then that means you have you, you end up buying more license for your Splunk right uh, so obviously it's going to affect your storage right you're ingesting noise data uh, even your dashboards will start reporting wrong data right uh, so there's actually a very easy way to find out if you are ingesting duplicate data right uh, so let's say you want to you want to check if there is duplicate data here right uh, so the way you check it is all you have to do is you run the search like this right um, so you obviously search for your index right uh, you search for index and you just do like this stats count by underscore time right underscore raw host index source and index and source and where count is greater than one right and we are only in, in, interested in count greater than one right so i'll explain what what is happening here so we are searching the index cisco right and then we are uh, counting by underscore time now this is very important because it is um, this splunk time is down to the millisecond right so our result will be quite accurate right underscore time underscore row then we are looking at host index and source right uh, now let's run the search and see if we have duplicate data right right so now i can see i have uh, two lines of duplicate data here and this is the duplicate data that actually came in right uh, so this line came in twice this came in twice this came in twice this came in twice right uh, so this host was sending um, duplicate data right we'll get into the reasons of why this actually happened uh, but then just by running the search we can actually see that there is duplicate data right uh, so if you want to look at uh, your underscore internal right uh, so if you want to see if this is happening we just run like this index is equal to underscore internal and duplication right uh, and then let's just run the search uh so you you'll notice something like this uh, you will notice a line like this um so basically it is saying duplication of events with channel whatever 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 uh, so this is something that i just put in here just for your understanding this is not a real warning but then in your environment you will actually see this uh error right uh so if you see this kind of error you have to start investigating and see why this host is actually sending duplicate data okay so now let's get to the second part of the issue right uh, so let's say you did identify the fact that you are ingesting duplicate data so there's actually no easy way of deleting this unfortunately because the data that you see here is not stored in splunk on a flat file it is stored in a hot bucket and the, the bucket might have rolled to cold it must have replicated you know if you're running multi-site replication it would have been replicated everywhere and if you as a user try to fiddle with this data you're going to mess up with your splunk instance right so 
there's two ways to do it. Um, you can either get professional services help and get the advice on what to do and you have to fix this on your source. Right. So this is the right way to do it is fixing this issue on its source so that new data doesn't come in like this. Right. Um, because the reason is, let's say this data. Right. Uh, so let's, let me see if that server is still running. Uh, this data is actually not stored in flat file. Like, like you know, everything is stored in a hot bucket or, or in a bucket format. Right. Uh, so no real way of just going into uh, the server and trying to delete the file because it, that file doesn't exist. It's actually stored there. And if you try to fiddle with it, it's going to tell you that the buckets have been corrupted and then you are going to run into so much other issues. Right. Uh, so the only way that you can actually fix this, if you ever see this, is to stop this at your source. Right. Uh, so if you go to op splunk var and lib and then splunk and then uh, Cisco, right? Uh, so we have. Uh, so let me see if the bucket have rolled it. Okay, so not rolled. So if we go to DB, right? Uh, it is still in hot. Right? So if we go to hot, right? So there's no flat file. Everything is um, in a different format. Or trying to fiddle with this is just going to ruin your Splunk instance, right? So let's come back to the board to a reason why this happens. Right? Splunk does have a mechanism that stops reingestion of data from happening under normal circumstances. Right? Uh, so let's say you have a file. Let's say you have any file. You're monitoring any file. And then if Splunk Universal Folder tries to re read that file again, there are mechanisms in UF that does prevent it from happening. So that is the uh, CRC option, um, things like that are there that prevents it from happening. So the reason why this does happen is network issue, right? The network issue can happen from your universal folder. Data is getting sent and from there it is going to your Splunk indexer, right? Uh, so even there, it wouldn't ideally happen. So the re one of the reason that it could happen is if you're for if you are following this document, right? Protection against data loss of in-flight data, right? So there is an option where you can tell Splunk that you have to protect your data on the flight, right? Basically, the way you do it is you enable TCP ACK, right? So data gets sent, right? Um, so the way it goes is the indexer receives the data, passes the data, and then it sends the acknowledgement back to the forwarder. So basically what we're saying is your forwarder sends data to indexer, indexer writes the data, and it sends the acknowledgement back to the forwarder saying everything is good. Now send, forget about this data, now start sending the next data. Right? So this is data protection on the fly, in flight. Right? So if you enable this, Right. And then if you have network issues, right, what is going to happen is let's say your universal folder does send the data, right? And the indexer does receive the data. But then at this step, all right, at this step, um, there's a network issue and this packet for whatever reason doesn't come back from your indexer back to the folder. That means your forwarder will actually think that the indexer never received that packet. And the forwarder is going to resend that packet again, thinking that the indexer never got it. So when that happens, you, you are going to see this message. So that is the meaning of this message, right? So if you read the message, what it is telling is possible duplication of events. Which channel, what which channel, whatever your channel is. Um, receiving the data. So this is uh, mail log. You're just trying to um, send mail log data and there is duplication on the um, on the channel that received the data on the indexer side. Right? Uh, so this, this thing was reported by your forwarder. Right? Um, so this thing happened. So uh, right. Uh, so now your universal forwarder is sending 
duplicate data into Splunk indexer, right? So the reason why it happens, indexer can go down, right? I mean, um, there's a physical box or VM machine, you can fail at any time, right? Indexer goes down, it can't, right? The server is busy, network goes down. So this is very important because these things happen in your network most of the times, right? So if you read this, it's basically telling that it is going to send and then it's going to wait for 300 seconds right if it doesn't receive the acknowledgement in 300 seconds it is going to send the data again right and if it sends the data again you are going to see duplicate data and then this is going to get metered and this log is going to get stored in your system and you cannot delete these lines easily by yourself right there is no way to easily delete this data Right. This is going to mess up with your dashboards and this is going to cause all kinds of problems on your Splunk instance. It, it, it will actually give you false readings. All right. Um, so the so if you read this documentation, I'll put this on the um, description. Right. So there is some ways that you can actually solve this by like increasing the queue size, uh, like increasing the queue size on the universal folder. So basically you tell the universal folder if you don't receive the use act now, if you don't receive the USEC in, let's say, five, 300 seconds, just wait some more time and see if the data comes in, right? So this is the default 300 seconds. If you don't receive it, wait some more time. If your queue is full, so basically when you enable USEC, there is a queue size of 21 MB, right? So it is going to hold 21 megabytes of data before, it, um, before uh, I mean, the queue, the, the queue is configured to, Hold 21 megabytes of data. You can increase the queue size, right? So there's a calculation here. You can read how how it works, right? Um, so you can fiddle with your queue size, and then you can actually decide if you're on a network that is actually flapping. Let's say it's going up and down all day long, right? Maybe you should consider not even enabling this setting, right? By, by default, it is off, but then this is something that people do tend to enable because they think that they want to have data protection in the fly. But this is the side effect of enabling this, right? So you can, uh, so let's say you are collecting data from your Active Directory or your um, Windows machines, right? These logs are actually being held by your event viewer, right? So even if there is like 10 minutes of delay or 15 minutes of delay, still the actual data is on the event viewer so when the network comes back your universal folder is going to read that event viewer files even viewer data again it, is, it will send it right it is better to have do it like that instead of enabling this option right uh, so let's say you're running this on a syslog collector r syslog syslog ng whatever syslog solution that you have you're actually writing the files uh, you're actually writing the input that is coming from the network to a file, right? So it, it, so even if the network is down for like 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes, doesn't matter, the file, the actual file is still on the server. You can actually just, the when the network is up, the universal folder can read that file and it will be sent back, right? So this is something that you can look at. Uh, so if you do need to set up uh, in-flight data protection, you can, but then you have to consider um, facts like is your network stable enough, all right? Uh, how much is your queue on your universal folder? What is the standard delay on your universal folder? Is there network prop? Is a network between the UF and the intermediary folder and the your end like the if it is Splunk Cloud or if it is on prem? Is it open? What is the status there? All right. Um, so you need to calculate all that before just opening this thing. And then if you do open it, this is what is what you're going to end up with, right? Duplicate data. Now, only way to, um, the easy way to get rid of this duplicate data is fix the data at source, right? Fix the universal folder at source, stop the universal folder from sending the data, and then age out this data naturally, right? Even if you call, um, engage professional services, we don't really have an easy way to solve this. Right, so best option is to age this data out and fix the issue at source, right? Um, so that would be a better way to do it because you will have 
hundreds and hundreds of lines of duplicate data. So this is a test box and then I upload a duplicate data. So we only have like a few lines. Right. So this is a simple search that you can run and you can actually check if you have duplicate data on your system. Right. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment and I'll get back to you on this. Thanks.